That's Nick. And that's Joseph, and today we're here to talk about I Used to Go Here, the fourth film directed by Chris Ray, who used to be known as Chris Swanberg. Uh, she's now the ex-wife of director Joe Swanberg. Uh, that uh, will be available to stream August 7, 2020, courtesy of Gravitas Entertainment. Ven sorry, Gravitas Ventures. It's the distributor. Should I tell the story? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. We find a woman named Kate. Kate Conklin. Kate is a recently published author. Mm -hmm. 35 year old. Mm -hmm. 35, 35, 37. I think she's 37. The actress is 37, the character is 35. She graduated high college 15 years prior. The synopsis. Okay, sorry. The press so, gets us 35. so this woman um, just recently published a book. So we see her like talking to what sounds like her agent, agents, mm -hmm. and they're telling her all these things and like how excited they are. You know, she had a book tour scheduled, but it's canceled because of low book sales. So she's down in the dumps. Mm -hmm. She's also carrying a box while she's talking on the phone. When she gets home, she opens the box and we find wedding invitations. But she recently broke up with her fiance. Mm -hmm. So it's like a double whammy. But while this is happening, she gets a call from a professor at her alma mater. David. David, asking if she'd like to come and speak since now she's a famous author. Mm -hmm. She agrees because she doesn't have shit else to do. Um, she gets there, she meets the professor, she witnesses, like she sits in on a class, um, she gives her talk, it goes well. Um, she ends up visiting, she's staying at a bed and breakfast and across the street is the house she used to live in while she was a student there 15 years prior. So she goes to like take pics, selfies in front of it, one of the residents comes out, says, hey, do you want to come look at the house? She kind of befriends the group of kids. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She ends up getting, she ends up going, they invite her to a party at the house. She goes. There's this whole storyline with her and the lady who runs the bed and breakfast that she can't come home after a certain hour. And if she loses her key, she can't have another one. Of course, so of course she loses the key. Okay, loses yeah. the key. So she has to spend the night at this house with the young people. So that happens. The next morning, she like goes, spends the day with them out at the lake. Um, she ends up spending the night with them again mm -hmm. after they, um, well, what happens? Oh, one of the boys in the house, what's his name? The cute one. Hugo. Hugo seems to kind of like her mm -hmm. and she obviously likes him because he's young and cute. So he's kind of down because his girlfriend just broke up with him and this girl, also had an interaction with Kate earlier in the day. Mm -hmm. She gave her like some advice on how to be a published author and it was really shitty advice. Mm -hmm. So this girl doesn't really like Kate. Um, Hugo is kind of like sad. They come up with this idea because they think that maybe the girl... April? April broke up with Hugo. So she could fuck around with... Because she's... David, played by Jermaine Come up. She's hooking up with David, the professor who brought Kate. Mm -hmm. Okay, so they have the brilliant idea to break into the professor's house to see what he's doing. Mm -hmm. And they do, and they catch the professor having sex with, a or being intimate with April. So that's a thing. She ends up going back um, that night, staying with the kids at this house again. Mm -hmm. She ends up having sex with Hugo. The next morning she leaves and April catches her leaving the house. Mm -hmm. So they have an exchange, which I thought was the only sort of like realistic dialogue in this entire film, um, where she admits she was wrong mm -hmm. and like Kate admits she was wrong and that she's not a great writer and she's kind of a sham. So she agrees to, you know, I mean, she goes back home when she gets a call from her best friend played by Zoe Chow, Zoe Chow, who's giving birth prematurely and wants her best friend there to help her. Mm -hmm. So she goes home at the end. There you go. Good job. Oh, so this film, well, f the person who directed it, what are their other films? Do I know uh, them? No, okay. I, don't, I don't think so. The, uh, her last film, though, in the director's statement for the film, her last, her last film, Expecting, uh, played at Sundance, um, and she was talking about her experiences going to touring with this film and being invited to Q&As and being invited to have drinks and... and, and um, see herself through the eyes of these young people that saw her as somebody that's made it uh, when she thinks that, you know, it's just, you know, she's kind of made it a little bit, but what 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 does she look like through their eyes? That's kind of what... Okay, so that would have been a good movie. 
Yeah. Because this is not that movie. No, and which is sad because I like Gillian Jacobs. Is that the star? Yeah. Okay, I liked her too. Yeah, she's, you know, she's always a very sweet presence. It's funny you brought up, uh, right after this ended, we were talking about similar films, and you brought up that um, Melissa McCarthy movie where she goes back to school, Life at the Party, which Gillian is in. She is? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Okay, well, let me say, so what did I like about the film? I like the lady. Gillian. Gillian. Jacobs. Um, it looks nice. It's fine, yeah. Um, well, shoot. I'm just going to say, my initial impression of the film is this felt like the starter story mm -hmm. for like a more interesting story. Like, it could have gone so many ways. So I had said like, oh, it could be sort of like a more like lighthearted comedy like the Melissa McCarthy movie. Mm -hmm. Or it could have been a little more raunchy and adult like that Seth Rogen, Zac Efron movie. Or it could have been like much more dramatic and serious, like maybe what the director had initially intended. Mm -hmm. But this just seems like the starter pack. It does. Because there's no, the, the main character, she's not like, she, she's just so bland. Well, There's nothing about she's not angry, she's not funny, she's not depressed, she's not hurt. And, she, and she, in fact, she's she, not struggling. She kind of has made it. She's published a novel that, uh, albeit, isn't selling well and gets a nasty review in the New York Times. Um, we don't get a sense of her finances, her goals. No. So we don't, like as, like, as a viewer, I didn't understand her to be in a bad place. No. Uh, there's just all the drama, the, 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 everything feels very manufactured about the drama. So... There's my that thought. Also, you know, I really wanted to watch. Like initially, I'm like, oh, I, I'm going to feel so nostalgic for my early twenties mm -hmm. and being in school, and it just never took me there. It made me realize it, it's yeah, it didn't take me there either. Because the scope is very small. We we only see her like in a classroom. We in a very tiny classroom. We see her in a hallway, but it's a weird angle. So maybe they didn't have access to a campus. We see her at a coffee shop. Mm -hmm. It's just all the key places where I felt like I should have felt nostalgic. It just feels very kind of like... It made me feel like, oh, like nostalgia is death. <laughs> kind of thing. And not really, not really all that interesting to experience unless you're doing it yourself. Like the depiction of nostalgia. And I, I think they're, we're supposed to believe that she is examining if she had stayed. And the state of regression she might have been in in if she had stayed but her investment with this group of college kids all of it feels she doesn't she doesn't feel like she's in a bad enough spot to willingly go around yeah sure a little depressed she's been left she's stalking her ex on instagram but but everything's so mild everything's so mild like not even like what's below like what's the word for less mild <laughs> mellow it's yeah it's all very tame like just like it's it's this it's this very familiar narrative about Xanax. And, so. and it's like she's not like I get the sense that maybe we're supposed to think her actions like she's being irreverent. But the group of kids she's with, they're all like smart, sweet kids. Like when they invite her out, well, at the party, they're just like they're not all drunk and belligerent. Mm -hmm. They're not doing hard drugs. They're like they seem like wholesome kids. The next day, they invite her to go to the lake, mm -hmm. and they're just chilling on the lake. They're not even drinking. They're literally the ones reading a book. So it's like these kids seem like good kids. I just, I guess I didn't understand like what the, like what's the function of her. So this is what I took from it. I think that she probably realized like my life is not like, like, you know, we all hit that point when we think like I'm 35. Like, am I where I want it to be? Sure. Does this make sense? So I think. I guess that is what I would say. That yes, and is. and you know there are two sequences that 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 do that do hit on that when she has the um, conversation with Hannah Marks April, which is kind of the only scene of authentic dialogue, and the very last scene when um, was the Ethan the name of the driver who who says she oh, read her right. who says she read her book and asked her what she thought of it, and she says I think it. I think it could be better. Um, so those are nice moments. It's just that my goodwill towards the film really ran out at some of the awkward uh, bits of comedy, such as the the tangent with the bed and breakfast owner. Uh, which okay, is so this, you know, these, no, that's a good point because I think these types of films, they have a struggle because you have to categorize it as something. Sure. So it's not a drama, so I guess you call it a comedy. But it's not funny. No. So the bits of humor that they attempt are the bed and, like the grouchy ass bed and breakfast lady who doesn't get nice until the end when Kate finally says like, oh, I just want breakfast. Okay, girl. Then 
she goes to the coffee shop because she's supposed to meet with some students to like uh, offer them advice, like mentor them. And she bumps into an old like college acquaintance. Mm -hmm. And he says, well, do you want to go out and grab a drink? So she's all excited. Yes. She goes out. And then this fool, well, first he tells her like, oh, you were my number one jerk off material. Yeah. Okay. Like that could have been funny, but it just feels like mildly awkward. Then he brings along some other lady and she even says like, oh, you invited her here. Okay. This is awkward. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Me watching it. It was also kind of like, okay. And then. They're kind of interacting, like the guy and the girl he brought and ignoring her. But it's not funny. No. It's just kind of like boring. Like like just how I would feel if I was sitting, having drinks with someone, they brought someone else they're talking to. Mm -hmm. uh, and also I, the, another scene mu very much in line with that is when uh, they're going on, they're going to break into Jermaine Clement's ha house and uh, the tall one gets left behind at uh, the house of Josh Wiggins' mother and then they end up baking delectables and making out. Okay, so Hugo's mom mm -hmm. lives like adjacent to the professor whose house they're going to break into. Mm -hmm. So one of the friends, Tall Jonathan or Tall mm -hmm. Jer, whatever his name is, he gets stuck and the mom's like, I know there's someone out there because they're hopping fences. Mm -hmm. I'm going to call the police. Cut to he's in the house with Hugo's mom. Who it just seems weird that like, okay, you they go to school in a small town that you also apparently grew up in, and you live with this guy, but you've never met his mom. Who, but then they explain that maybe their like relationships kind of not the best, whatever. But then this tall kid, like kind of like falls for the mom, mm -hmm. like he kisses her, but it's not like in a raunchy American Pie kind of way. No. It's just in an awkward, like... It's, it's, <laughs> just, it's just awkward how it all kinds of, like, because it's, we're never established the, the sense of this kind of small community in this house. Like, I, I, I grew up in a, I, when I was uh, an undergrad, I lived in a house like that with people. Right. And, you know, after not very long, you learn their family, family dynamics. Right. And... I guess my other, like, the other thing that didn't quite connect is, like, we find Kate in, Illa, like, in Chicago, mm -hmm. and the town Carbondale mm -hmm. is also in Illinois. So it's not like she traveled across country, mm -hmm. but she seems so disconnected. Like, if I lived that close to my, like, alma mater, I wouldn't, like, 15 years has passed? That seemed weird to me. We don't get a sense of, like, her life there. The title of the film is very appropriate because Kate does spend a lot... That character spends a lot of time saying, like, I used to do that. I used mm -hmm. to be here. Oh, I used to... We know, girl. Like, her, like, nostalgia... and like, Or not even nostalgia. Like, her reminiscing about her college days seems weird considering that she didn't stray that far from... Like, sure. from home. I mean, you know, and, you know, it's a fitting enough role for uh, Gillian Jacobs, but, like, I kept thinking of other films I've seen her in that I really like. There's this film called Life Partners in 2014 that kind of suffers it's similar territory, directed by Susanna Fogel, about two best friends who, who kind of have to re-examine their uh, friendship when one uh, be begins dating somebody seriously in the the re resulting fallout of that. Well, um, I don't think this is a bad movie. It's just boring and dry. Yeah. So, you know, I think if you like anyone in it, uh, then it could be worth the watch if it's streaming somewhere for free, I guess. Sure. I and mean, it's like, poor Zoe Chow. When is she going to get there? Let me tell you something about that lady. She's been in so many movies that I've seen, and she, she's she's going to be like... Uh, She's going to be the Udo Kier of her generation. No, don't say that. No, uh, no I mean, like, she's going to be, like, when you hire her, you're getting some awkward middle, you know, like, late 30s lady with bad bangs who just plays the same character. I think I think the lead in this, Jacobs, is often cast in those kind of roles, too, so this is her. So good for Zoe Chow. She but, found but, her lane. I, yeah, it'd be, it'd be nice to see her. I, I would be interested in seeing her, like, front and center in something, but... Okay. Okay, what would you give this film? What would you give it? I think two out of five is fair. I was going to say two out of five as well. All right, bye. Bye.